Hello folks, tonight I am going after the Helix Nebula and I am somewhat in a panic because I started this object probably a couple of months ago. I captured around seven hours of HA and I haven't been able to get back to this object since then because of bad weather or the moon was too close to it and too bright. And now it's, it's already probably at the meridian when I start. I probably only have an hour a night on this, so I really need clear skies fast. So I've, like I mentioned, I've got my HA done, but now I'm finally starting um, oxygen. And uh, the, the mean readout is definitely higher than I'd like. Uh, there may still be haze out there. It's 1400 for four minutes at gain 75, offset 15, and I would have thought that the mean readout should be more like 800 for this filter. So I'm either overexposed because of light pollution or there's haze out there. But you know what? I don't care. I have to keep this data. I, I'm running out of time. And that's what one raw image looks like. Not very strong, but if I can at least get two or three hours over a, a few nights of clear skies, maybe I can make do. Um, we'll see. And... Uh, let's take a look at my guiding. Now I am definitely pointing low in the south. Uh, I don't think this object ever gets more than maybe uh, somewhere between 25 degrees and 27 degrees at best in my location. And uh, guiding at 0.76 for as low as I'm pointing in the south, I, I think that's about as good as it gets for me. So I'll take that. I, I think uh, I'll be just fine. So now I just got to hope the skies stay clear. It's not going to stay clear all night, but I only need maybe one or two hours tonight and maybe uh, one or two hours on the next night if I can get another clear night soon. I know I sound stuffed up. My nose has been running all day. So uh, anyway, I'll try not to, I'll try to get out of panic mode, but right now I really need the skies to stay clear because they haven't been and I know clouds are coming. So anyway, that's enough talking. I'll be back. Well, I did it. I got in four hours of oxygen over two nights to go along with the seven hours of HA that I captured way back. So um, the data was not great. In fact, it was probably the worst oxygen data I've ever captured. But let's take a look. Um, this is my, um, my HA. And even the HA pointing that low, it was kind of bright, even though I did uh, a, a dynamic background extraction. I can see it's still a little bit light in the corner here. And prepare yourself. This is my oxygen data, four hours of oxygen. And um, this is basically a, a straight stack. I, did, I didn't really do anything else to it. I, I couldn't. I tried a dynamic background extraction. Uh, an automatic background, they they just expose the flaws even worse. You know, when you're that much um, overexposed or whether it was haze, I, I'm thinking it's more just being too bright, too much light pollution in the low south because that's where all my neighbor's lights are, the bright ones anyway. Now, flats can only take you so far. And if you had seen how bad the data looked after I did a background extraction, it was even worse. Um, so normally I can I can fix the oxygen edge to edge, but not this time. So I, I work with a, a straight stack and nothing more. And let me show you um, how this data looked when I combined it. I'm still using sometimes that SHO AIP script. Uh, I already made a video, like I said before, on um, how to do it with pixel math, but you know, I'm lazy. <laughs> All I gotta do is a few clicks in the SHO AIP script. And that's what the combine looked like. So, okay, I thought, that's interesting. I, I think I have enough data to work with here. Um, and uh, let me show you the iterations I started going through here. So, after I, I played around with it a little bit, I tried to sharpen it a little. I tried to denoise it a little bit in, in uh, uh, pics inside. This is what it looked like. And then I started going over to uh, Photoshop and I made it a little more red and, and now from here I start sort of flopping between Photoshop and Pics and Sight um, and 
this is another version. I'm not sure what's so let me go back here. I think I just made it uh, stand out a little bit more. Oh, okay, and this this is another version where I um, I started trying to tinker with uh, the color in the center. I actually masked off everything except the center so I could play with the color. That's how it looked before, and then that's how it looked now. And then I just trying to bring out a little bit more nebulosity in this one. Uh, I, I'm playing with the stars a little bit here, trying to. Uh, uh, I had some blown out stars, so I, I think I I used Clone Snap to fix a few stars there, and then I I cropped a little bit to bring it in closer and, and get rid of some edges that really weren't looking so good, and I came in a little closer, and that is my final version. What do you think? <laughs> So I knew I could do something with it. It's, it is what it is. I, I'll take it. And you know what they say when once you start playing with the data, it's no longer good for science. <laughs> this is a case in point. <laughs> and you go from here to here. <laughs> this data is of no scientific use to anyone. But right for me, hey, it's just a pretty picture. And I think it's worthy of doing a metal print on if I, I haven't done metal print in a long time. I've, I don't have anywhere to hang them and I've given out so many. I don't think anyone wants anymore. So, uh, I'm going to call it quits for now, but you know, that I may change my mind in the future like I always do. So if you ever want to see the real final version, you can check Astrobin. And that's all I got folks. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you later.